episode of Start Talk. On the show, we answer your internet questions. I'm your host, Sarah Imry, and I'm here with Start.ca CEO, Pete Rocca, who is certainly an internet expert. In this day and age of socially distanced living, we are, of course, socially distanced right now, talking through the internet on a Zoom call. The internet is everywhere and is growing more and more important in everyone's lives. And hopefully everyone who's watching this show, our followers, our customers, and if you're just joining us for the first time, I'm sure the internet's important to you too. But how does it work? How, if I was to type into my computer right now, amazon.ca looking for a birthday present, I'm on the start cable internet here, how does that information get from my laptop to Amazon and back onto my screen? You yeah, would certainly know, hey, Pete? <laughs> it's a great question. Yeah, there's there's a lot of moving pieces. Uh, or not so much moving, but a lot of parts that are involved. Um, maybe the easiest way is just kind of walk through the, the process, what happens when you type uh, Amazon.ca into, um, into your web browser. And the first thing that uh, the computer has to do is it has to figure out what is the IP address of uh, Amazon and an IP address is kind of how all computers talk to each other uh, on the internet and you can kind of think of it as you know the address um, to be able to get you know uh, your request to uh, the destination and kind of there's this protocol called DNS um, and DNS is used to kind of look it up so if you think of like the white pages back uh, decades ago when you kind of were to look up somebody's name you would get their phone number uh, and maybe their address. And that's a very similar request. So you type amazon.ca, um, that request comes to what are called our domain name servers, and we look up the address and, and send your computer back the IP address. So once, once it kind of gets the IP address, um, then your uh, browser will make that request uh, to that IP address. And uh, all of that, that request, so you'd say, you know, I, I'm, I'm going to amazon.ca, I want the web page for amazon.ca, it takes that, kind of puts it into what's called a packet or a bunch of packets, these IP packets, and these packets um, then kind of need to travel to their destination. So the first step, you know, would be uh, to leave your laptop. You know, let's say you've got your laptop and it's connecting wireless to your Wi-Fi router. Um, so that would convert your, it over wireless signals, uh, invisibly, uh, over to your Wi-Fi um, device that would take those wireless signals and its job is to convert the wireless into uh, electronic signals which travel over your um, your ethernet cable. So the kind of like a thick telephone cord that's plugged into your Wi-Fi router is, um, you know, is using electronic signals to, to take that data and pass that IP packet. So from there, if you travel along that cable and it's connected into the back of your modem, uh, your modem's job is to take those uh, I, that those IP packets and convert them into a different medium or onto your coax. So the cable uh, that comes from your wall and plugs into uh, the back of your modem. The modem's job is to take those IP packets uh, digitally and convert them onto electric signals that will go over that coax. So now you follow that coax, you know, through your walls and out to the outside of your house. Uh, and out there is a little, usually a little gray box um, called the NID or a a network interface device. And that, um, that cable now runs, there's another cable which they're connected together, and that cable runs out through your neighborhood, usually out you know, through your backyard or your front yard, uh, either underground or aerial, uh, up on a pole. And it goes um, to another thing called a pedestal. So we call it curb furniture. Uh, those are kind of those brown or gray uh, little boxes that you'll see throughout your neighborhood. And its job is to kind of aggregate all of the uh, cable connections that are coming into it uh, in one kind of place where they can you know, do work on it or, or update the connectors. Then the, the electronic signals go to what's called a feeder cable. So the feeder cable that's feeding that pedestal uh, runs back to uh, a, what's called a node. And the node now aggregates a bunch of these feeder cables from the pedestals into this device and converts those signals uh, or send those signals, it, sometimes it converts it over fiber or, or it can continue over coax depending on you know, the age of the infrastructure in your neighborhood. From the node, 
uh, it runs back to what's called the head office. And the head office um, is what they have these things called CTM uh, CMTSs. Um, and basically they take all of those digital signals that have kind of come on and take them and put them back into um, electronic packets that'll be converted back over ethernet. And usually at this point it's fiber, not like the thick telephone cable, but a thinner glass wire that these signals uh, are, are converted to light actually uh, that go over. So now you've got your, your request that you typed in and it's made it all the way back to this, um, to this head end. And we then have uh, interconnections with these head ends. So the head ends are operated by the local cable infrastructure in your area. And then we have an interface where we take the, the packet or that request uh, and it comes onto our network. So from there, we, um, in the case, your case, it would uh, come back to our London data center. And in our data center, uh, we have our own versions of routers. And unlike, you know, the small desktop router that you might have in your uh, own home, uh, these are massive, you know, routers that uh, are, are used to processing millions of transactions every second. So now we have this packet and how do we, how do we know where this packet goes? Well, we have the IP address. And so these routers are like big electronic switchboards, if you could almost think of them that way. And they, they all talk, the internet works by all of these routers talking to one another uh, over a protocol that's called the BGP. And BGP is basically, you know, a list of, you know, who's responsible and what's the path to get to a specific IP address. So in this case, um, we would uh, look that address up. We would say, oh, we have an interconnection with Amazon in Chicago. Uh, we have a data center in Chicago as well. And it would uh, send the packet over one of our fiber links down to uh, Chicago, where there's another router in Chicago that also has the smart. It's not quite as big as the ones that we have in, in Toronto and London, um, but it does the processing and says, okay, now this packet is received in Chicago. Where does it go? And again, we would look and we say, well, we have this path to Amazon here. We're going to hand it off to Amazon. So now that packet is on Amazon's network. It'll travel within you know, Amazon's infrastructure until it lands on a server. Um, that server then takes that request, the, the web server takes that request, processes it, generates whatever the content is that you requested, and it takes the whole path back. They're, they hand it off to us in Chicago. Chicago sends it back to Toronto. Toronto sends it back to the head end in London. It goes back out through all the distribution feeders, making all of those transitions from you know, coax to fiber to ethernet, back to the wireless uh, router in your home, broadcast it back to your laptop. Your, your browser takes the information, which is just a bunch of text and gobbledygook, you know, if you were to look at it, and uh, renders a page on your web browser showing you lots of great gift ideas. Wow. So it's a lot is happening behind the scenes just by typing something into your web browser. It's certainly traveling a lot farther than we are these days. <laughs> now, sure. if, if I was to go all the way to Chicago, it would take several hours. How quickly is this happening with my information? Really, really fast. <laughs> um, you know, so if you think of kind of the amount of time that it takes to get from your laptop um, to your Wi-Fi router, that's usually less than one millisecond. And then the path from your Wi-Fi back to the head end, um, you know, depending on certain factors, but you're, you're looking at like a dozen-ish, you know, milliseconds to do that. Um, by the time that it lands in, in London at our data center, uh, you're probably in the total path um, of about 20 milliseconds. This is about round trip. So you can think about how fast it is to go to one way. We're talking about 10 milliseconds. Yeah. Uh, another 10 milliseconds to get to Amazon, basically, uh, return that whole path, you know, and in a few dozen milliseconds, um, you've got the entire path there and back. My goodness, it's definitely going uh, all over the place in order to get all the our internet needs taken care of. Now, how does that work with start.ca? So if start, how, where does start.ca take that information and uh, how, how is that working in regards to our, the, the internet connection that the ISP has control over? Yeah, we, we handle kind of all of the smarts and figuring out how do we, um, so kind of the path between your home uh, and the head end is a pretty simplistic path. You know, every single packet takes the same path. Uh, it goes over the same physical infrastructure. So these are kind of, like I said, the wires that are underground and the boxes that are in the neighborhood. 
Um, and all of that gets back to this head end where we take the, the handoff. And when the handoff comes to us, it's our job to figure out how do we get it to where it needs to go uh, in the most efficient way. Uh, and this is really kind of the reason that we've invested a lot in, um, you know, we have facilities in, in London and in Toronto and New York and Chicago. And the reason that we've made those investments is that we control so much more of the path between us and the content provider, basically where you're trying to get the content. And that allows us to make smart routing decisions um, to ensure that our links are not uh, oversaturated or that there's any capacity issues uh, and really puts a lot more control uh, and performance and reliability um, in that path to get it back to you as quickly as we can. So there's a lot of information going through many, many, many different channels. How are web pages and information stored on the, with the internet? So these days, not as much content is stored as, as past. You know, they're back in the days, um, there were what called static web pages. You know, people would create one web page and that would be the same web page for, for everyone. Uh, so this is in the days before Amazon, but let's imagine if you were to take a static web page and apply it to like an Amazon type of uh, scenario, you would land at the web page and you would see the exact same content as everybody else said. It wouldn't say, hello, Sarah, up in the top of the corner. It wouldn't have, you know, items that were, you know, specific for you. And it would just have, you know, the same 10, like, 10 items that everyone could get. And that's what kind of the web page would look like. And that would be what we would call a static web page. These days, things are much more customized and dynamic, so there's not as much storage of web pages, um, but a lot of the, the, the photos and stuff, etc., are still stored. And all of that is done on computers that are where the content provider is. So in Amazon's case, they'll have a whole bunch of servers, you know, and, and Amazon's so distributed, they'll have, you know, data centers in, in multiple different areas, uh, which is why we take the path to get to the closest and fastest one. So in Chicago, uh, they'll have, you know, a server farm with, you know, hundreds or maybe thousands of servers that host images and programs that will generate this content for you. Um, so that would be, you know, where it's stored. But if you were to like visit um, a website in another country and say, you know, your friend has a flower shop in uh, the Netherlands, uh, they might have, you know, a local web page that's stored closer to them and that content might be stored there. But essentially all of the web pages or content is stored uh, on the content provider side of things. But ultimately that's the beauty of the internet. You don't need to know where it's stored. Yeah. Um, you know, that's our job to figure out how to get to it and get it back to you. Well, I'm certainly glad that uh, our information is at least traveling all over the world these days and that start.ca and everything that all the inner workings that are happening behind the scenes are working so hard to get that information all over the world. It certainly takes quite a path. Thank you for explaining that so well for us today, Pete. It's, My pleasure. It's been a, an eye-opening experience, so I hope you think that the next time you type in your browser, maybe you're typing in our start.ca social channels to check out the next Start Talk video, you know that it's going all through a, a very long path, but in a very quick uh, period of time, thanks to your, your ISP, like start.ca. Thanks again for watching and hopefully you'll tune in next time for our next episode of Start Talk. Thanks, Sarah.